Today, we will talk about the ISA atmosphere, also known as standard conditions in aviation. First of all, let's see what ISA stands for. ISA is the acronym for International Standard Atmosphere. This is a model of atmospheric conditions, adopted as a universal frame of reference. The atmospheric conditions described in this model refer mainly to air pressure and temperature values at different altitudes. This model was created by the International Civil Aviation Organization in the 1950s, and that's the reason why the acronym ISA is sometimes interpreted as ICAO standard atmosphere. Once the ISA model was created, it was published in ICAO document 7488, where all the conditions and parameters used in the model are specified. But now, the question is, why is the ISA model needed in aviation? Well, first of all we must say that the atmospheric conditions of a certain place are changing constantly depending on the season and local weather patterns. For example, here we have two people, one of them is on a coast with a tropical climate, while the other is on a coast with a colder climate. In this case, the person on the tropical coast would say that the usual temperature at sea level is 30 degrees Celsius, while the person on the cold coast would say that the normal temperature at sea level is 5 degrees Celsius. As we can see in this example, for a certain altitude, in this case sea level, we have two different reference temperatures depending on the conditions of each location. This is why it is necessary to have a worldwide standard reference against which different conditions can be compared. With this in mind, let's look at the principles and characteristics of the ISA model. This model assumes that air behaves as an ideal gas, so it is assumed to be free of moisture and suspended solid particles such as dust or sand. Obviously this is not the case in practice, but these assumptions help in the development of the model. So based on this, the ICAO determines certain reference values for air pressure and temperature at different altitudes. However, before going into detail with these, we must say that in general terms, pressure and temperature decrease with increasing altitude. In other words, at sea level, we will find a higher pressure and temperature than at higher altitudes. With this being said, let's now see how the pressure behaves in the ISA atmosphere. Here, it is assumed that the pressure at sea level is 29.92 inches of mercury, or 1013 hectopascals, depending on the unit of measurement used. This pressure decreases with altitude at a variable rate, however, we can say that the pressure reduction with altitude in the first levels corresponds to approximately 1 inch of mercury per 1,000 feet, or 1 hectopascal per 30 feet. This means that under standard conditions, at sea level we would have an atmospheric pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury, at 1,000 feet we would have approximately 28.92, at 2,000 feet we would have 27.92 and so on. This results in a graph like this. As we can see, the line is not completely straight, since as we said previously, the rate of change of pressure with altitude is variable. However, up to about 10,000 feet we can experience a reduction of 1 inch of mercury per 1,000 feet. Now that we have seen how pressure behaves, let's take a look at the temperature in the ISA model. The temperature is assumed to be 15 degrees Celsius at sea level and it is reduced by 1.98 degrees Celsius for each 1,000 feet of altitude increase within the troposphere, which can be rounded up to 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet. This means that under standard conditions at sea level, we would have a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, at 1,000 feet 13 degrees Celsius, at 2,000 feet 11 degrees Celsius and so on. Now, this rate of temperature reduction with altitude applies only within the troposphere. As we know, the Earth's atmosphere is divided into several layers that have different characteristics. The first layer we find right above the surface is known as the troposphere. Under standard conditions within this layer, the temperature decreases by 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet until reaching an altitude of 36,089 feet. At this altitude we find the tropopause, which is the transition layer between the troposphere and the stratosphere. From this point on, the temperature is assumed to remain constant with altitude until reaching 65,617 feet, where the temperature starts increasing with altitude. 
However, considering that most aircraft operate below 50,000 feet, we will not take into account that temperature increase with altitude in the stratosphere. So with this in mind, the temperature would be 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, and it would be reduced by 2 degrees for every 1,000 feet. So at 15,000 feet we would have minus 15 degrees Celsius, at 30,000 feet we would have minus 45 degrees Celsius, until 36,089 feet is reached, where the temperature would be minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. From this point, the temperature remains constant at minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. This means that if we measure the temperature at 40,000 or 50,000 feet we would still have minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. Now, we must keep in mind that these values apply only within the ISA model, since in practice, the altitude at which we find the tropopause varies depending on several factors. For example, near the equator the tropopause will be much higher than at the poles. However, since we are talking about a universal standard reference model, the values are fixed. All this we have discussed about the temperature in the ISA model results in a graph like this one. As we can see the temperature decreases from sea level to 36,089 feet, and then it remains constant. Now, in many occasions it is necessary to determine the standard temperature at a certain altitude, and although we could calculate it mentally, we can also use the following formula. ISA temperature is equal to 15 minus 2 times altitude divided by 1000. A side note here. If the altitude is higher than 36,000 feet, the standard temperature is directly assumed to be minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. Let's see an example of how to use it. Let's say we want to determine the standard temperature at 23,000 feet. Well, in this case we just have to replace the altitude in the formula with 23,000 feet, and then, after doing the math we obtain minus 31 degrees Celsius. It is important to note that all the values we are calculating are approximate, since the actual and exact values are published in this table, found in the ICAO document 7488. Another consideration is that in practice, the actual atmospheric conditions are almost never standard. So the ISA model is more used as a reference rather than to represent the average conditions of the atmosphere. With this in mind, the ISA model is widely used in aviation, mainly for instrument calibration and determining the nominal performance of an aircraft. Now, as the ISA model is used as a reference, there is another important concept, which is the ISA deviation. This is a term used to express how different the actual atmospheric conditions are compared to the ISA model, normally in terms of temperature. Let's see an example. Suppose a person at sea level measures the air temperature. Theoretically, according to the ISA model, it should be 15 degrees Celsius. However, under real conditions, let's say the person actually measures 25 degrees Celsius. Now, in this situation, if we compare the actual conditions with the standard model, we can see that there is a deviation of 10 degrees Celsius. And since the actual conditions are 10 degrees warmer than the standard, we say that the ISA deviation is ISA plus 10. In other words, the ISA deviation is obtained measuring the difference between the actual temperature and the standard temperature according to the ISA model. For example, under ISA conditions, at sea level we would have 15 degrees Celsius, at 2000 feet we would have 11 degrees, at 4007 degrees, at 6003 degrees and so on. Now, if we look a model with a deviation of minus 20 degrees, it would be known as ISA minus 20. In this particular model, at sea level we would have a temperature of minus 5 degrees, since it is 20 degrees colder than the standard. At 2000 feet we would have minus 9 degrees, at 4000 minus 13 degrees, at 6000 minus 17 degrees and so on. On the other hand, if we look a model with a deviation of plus 20 degrees, it would be known as ISA plus 20. In this model, at sea level we would have a temperature of 35 degrees, since it is 20 degrees warmer than the standard. At 2000 feet we would have 31 degrees, at 4027 degrees, at 6000 feet 23 degrees and so on. As we can see, 
the different conditions are expressed as a deviation in relation to the standard ISA model. In this case we analyzed the ISA-20 and ISA-20 models, but we can really have any other deviation value, positive or negative. For example, ISA-3, ISA-8, or ISA-12. Now, something to keep in mind is that at a certain airport or area, the ISA deviation is not always the same, as it will vary throughout the day and with the weather conditions. Let's see an example. Here we have an airport at sea level, in this case the standard temperature according to the ISA model would be 15 degrees Celsius. This means that, theoretically, the temperature at the airport should always remain at 15 degrees Celsius. Which simply does not happen in real life. For example, let's say that at 6 a.m. the temperature recorded at the airport is 8 degrees Celsius. If we then compare the actual temperature with the standard, we would obtain an ISA deviation of minus 7 degrees. In other words, the conditions at the airport are 7 degrees colder than standard, and therefore they are expressed as ISA minus 7. Now, this is true only at 6 a.m., since as the day progresses, the temperature will gradually increase. Let's say for example, that at 1 p.m. the temperature recorded is 18 degrees Celsius. If now we compare the actual temperature with the standard, we would obtain a deviation of plus 3 degrees. In other words, the conditions are 3 degrees warmer than standard, and therefore they are expressed as ISA plus 3. This was an easy example, since we already know that the standard temperature at sea level is 15 degrees Celsius. Now let's look at an example with a different elevation, say 4000 feet. Now, in order to determine the standard temperature at that airport, we need to know first, what is the standard temperature at 4000 feet? To do so, we can use the formula we saw previously. Here we just replace the altitude with 4000, and we find that the standard temperature at that level is 7 degrees Celsius. Now, let's suppose that the actual temperature at the airport at 6 a.m. is 11 degrees. In this case the deviation would be plus 4 degrees. And as the day progresses the temperature increases gradually. Let's say that at 1 p.m. the temperature recorded is 21 degrees. Now the ISA deviation would be plus 14 degrees. Now, this concept does not only apply to airport elevations, but also to any other altitude or level. For example, let's say an aircraft is flying at 6,500 feet, and the pilot reads on his instruments that the outside air temperature is 8 degrees Celsius. In this case, what is the current ISA deviation? Well, first of all, we must determine what is the standard temperature at 6,500 feet. By applying the formula we obtain 2 degrees Celsius. If we then compare the actual conditions of 8 degrees with the standard of 2 degrees, we obtain an ISA deviation of plus 6 degrees. This information can be useful to the pilot, as it allows him or her to make accurate aircraft performance calculations. Let's see an example of how this information can be used. Here we have a typical cruise performance table for a light aircraft. It takes into account different conditions and parameters in order to show the expected aircraft performance. One of these is the air temperature. But as we can see in the upper row, the temperature is expressed in terms of ISA deviation. For example, the middle column corresponds to ISA conditions, so this should be used only when the ISA deviation is zero. In the left column we can see ISA minus 20, and in the right side ISA plus 20. In other words, in order to properly use the table, the pilot must first determine the ISA deviation, and then use the corresponding column. Now, in some aircraft it is not necessary for the pilot to manually calculate the ISA deviation, since these aircraft have systems that automatically calculate the deviation in real time as we can see in this example. Let's see a short summary of everything we talked about in the video. ISA is an international standard model of atmospheric conditions, mainly pressure and temperature at different altitudes. In terms of temperature, it is assumed that at sea level the temperature is 15 degrees, and it decreases by 2 degrees for each 1,000 feet increase in altitude, until reaching 36,089 feet, from where it is considered constant at minus 56.5 degrees. 
In terms of pressure, it is assumed that at sea level the pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury, or 1013 hectopascals, and it is reduced by approximately 1 inch of mercury for every 1000 feet, or 1 hectopascal for every 30 feet at the first levels. Finally, the ISA deviation is a value obtained by comparing the current conditions in relation to the standard conditions. I hope the information presented in this video has been useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.